and we will enter the the second uh, presentation from uh, associate professor manfredo manfredini good morning manfredo yeah <laughs> yeah professor uh, manfredo manfredini is a director and associate professor at the school of architecture and planning of the university of auckland new zealand and honorary professor at the College of Architecture and Urban Planning, Hunan University, China. He taught design and theory courses at leading global schools, for example, Tsinghua University in Beijing, Milan Technical University in Italy, and was invited as a uh, various uh, keynote speaker in, in various uh, conferences, international conferences, for example, China Housing Congress, and also in July, uh, in seven Artepolis conference in Bandung. Yeah. Uh, participants can also uh, read complete uh, CV from Professor Manfredo Manfredini uh, in the chat column. Okay, Professor Manfredo Manfredini, time is yours for 30 minutes. Yeah, please. Ah. Please unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction and uh, uh, possibly uh, a bit exaggerated. So I'm a bit embarrassed. Uh, uh, it does be that I'm a bit old. But uh, in reality, uh, one yeah. thing probably has to be amended because uh, uh, my participation in the Artipolis was back two years ago. Oh, after yeah. The yeah. 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 Uh, so anyway, thank you uh, for having me, for inviting me in this uh, beautiful conference. Uh, I've uh, followed uh, some of the uh, of the parts of the conference or sessions, uh, and uh, I find uh, particularly interesting uh, the possibility of presenting uh, uh, what I'm going to present in this context because it draws upon things that I've heard uh, in the last few days, uh, and specifically yesterday, uh, something that was uh, not only discussed uh, uh, by the moderator as a framing. Uh, element of the entire conference, uh, but specifically designed, uh, articulated by Professor Vibisono in uh, his uh, talk. So what I'm going to present today, and I'm going to share the screen if uh, uh, that works. Uh, can I please get confirmation uh, that you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, what am I presenting is uh, exactly the question of public space, the question of urban commons, and how we can probably rethink at them from uh, the uh, architectural perspective, uh, which is not necessarily making making just uh, uh, form and shapes, uh, but actually thinking of what the agency of these particular important and fundamental things for our associated life. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, actually to articulate uh, uh, what is my main research interest, uh, which is uh, comparative urbanism, uh, that looks at uh, understanding uh, how some uh, particular trends, uh, which I would say are global now in this globalized world, are actually eventuating uh, in very different ways, in different, uh, very different realities and contingencies. And what I'm absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, interested in in this particular discussion is uh, how can we design as architects and planners uh, a new way of uh, understanding uh, the what I call urban infrastructure, but infrastructure or relationality that uh, uh, can cope with the major global uh, changes and the big uh, transformation that we are experiencing. So in reality, I'm particularly interested in understanding uh, uh, what is going on in uh, uh, this particular sector in which there is a huge transition between uh, uh, what was back in time, uh, the public space of the city. I don't want now to go back uh, to the Hellenic uh, uh, public, uh, public space of the Agora. Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, looking at what is happening in the modernity and particularly in this uh, post and late modernity or hypermodernity in which we are in uh, that uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, creating uh, uh, new frame, new frameworks and uh, new conditions for the experience of, of what we consider publicness. And the question of publicness and privacy is uh, absolutely uh, subject to revision for incredible number of ways as it has been in the past, but particular for the agency of uh, two things that you can see in this slide, which are what I call uh, 
the multidimensional translocation and the advanced spatial transduction. Essentially, two things that talks about mobility, mobility of people, mobility of communication. What I'm trying to do is uh, to contribute, as you can see here in my research, both in the theoretical and in the practical part, uh, to what has been recently developed uh, as uh, the leading strategy for the sustainable de development of cities, in particular the new urban agenda. And indeed, my work uh, has been presented and discussed uh, uh, in uh, the three latest uh, big conferences of the United Nations uh, Habitat Group. Uh, so from the big uh, uh, conference uh, in Quito to the other two recent uh, uh, World Urban Forum in Abu Dhabi and uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur. So to go straight into the topic, uh, and I'm trying to make a, a, a challenge today because it's the first time I'm giving uh, such a speech uh, online. Uh, and uh, since I know and I've experienced that online, there are major questions of uh, delays and the difficulties uh, in hearing uh, and receiving uh, all the information, I thought that the best thing to do was to put a text uh, that I'm going to uh, to receive, to, uh, to talk, uh, to, to, talk, to uh, present, uh, uh, on the screen, what you will see, and that's the challenge, is a series of illustrations that in reality uh, are not necessarily didascalically represented and explained by the text, but in a way constitute forms of external references that you can creatively interact. And uh, in, a, in a second, I will explain and articulate why, try to understand or try to see how it is possible to imagine systems uh, that connects uh, heterogeneous things and the heterogeneity here between the text and the images uh, in a way uh, that this connection is productive, in a way that this pro pro uh, connection is autonomous and stimulates uh, uh, possible uh, new uh, worlds, so new, new inventions of uh, articulations uh, led by particular forces uh, that might be of desire, might be of a particular uh, capacity, critical capacity. So the first thing I want to talk about is the question of the right to the city and urban commons, and of course, public space is probably one of the most obvious urban commons, uh, how that relate. So in the increasing cosmopolitan condition of our cities, inclusionary urban commons are becoming more and more relevant as civic institution for encounter, dialogue and collaboration. The non-commodifiable asset experiences increasing issues of social inclusion, participation, privatization, and universal access. This talk will provide a framework for the design of urban commons based on two principles. Firstly, commons are seen as tools to increase the capacity of communities to relate and articulate heterogeneous values and paradigms, personalities, spheres of thought, and material intangible elements that are constitutive of their reality. Secondly, commons are defined as collecting material institutions providing infrastructures to sustain equity, diversity, and collaboration in communities by enabling, enabling mobilization and sharing of resources and the establishment of new urban centralities that reassemble the social. These commons are indeed assemblages that support the constitution of free, open, and participatory networks where the diversity of our progressively multicultural society is treasured and considered essential to its growth. Instead of aiming to produce consensus among irreconcilable, irreconcilable differences, these civic assemblages identify conflicts as a productive disturbance that is conducive to fundamental identification processes and sustains acculturation, recognition, and understanding of the other and diverse. In a world of growing complexity, the affirmation of conflicts, uh, a conflict as necess is necessary to support a positive development based on individuation and autonomy. The constitution of a positive collective social subject relies indeed on the production of a collaborative multitude where competing social, cultural, and material counter speciality are in permanent dialogue and cross-pollination. Only by reclaiming, defending, maintaining, and taking care of the coming together of strangers who work uh, collaboratively, collaboratively despite their differences can lead to a true and non-mystified form of democracy, as Antonio Negri, Tony Negri uh, just stated. A social production based on diversity and differentiation is crucial for enabling participation and stimulating political mobilization, for the appropriation, 
of the urban space that has been alienated, privatized, and financialized by inadequate system of governance. Only such mobilization can reconciliate the multiple spheres of the multitude towards the co-creative construction of a safe, healthy, resilient, pluralistic, and democratic society founded on principles of freedom, equality, and solidarity. The formation of such a civic realm does not only include special justice, intellectual engagement, and transcultural discourse. Rather, it involves questions of ethics and morality, and importantly, economy. The ongoing shift to a post-consumerist post age in which excessive production and excessive consumption are intimately merged in a novel mode that has been named presumption by Ritzer, poses major threats to the sustainable development of our more than urban society. More than urban because the fluency and the movement between the two is no longer trackable as it was in the past. By the way, what you see on the right hand side of the slides uh, is a, a research that exactly inspects those networks and how they are formed into this new urban reality, particularly looking at uh, their digital environment. In reality, they are is, is a result of research uh, done on Instagram, Instagram data, big data. By forming context specific organizational formats, this form of social production develops civic assemblages that enable self forming uh, publics to appear, represent themselves, and be represented. Such an in integral social spatial relationality promotes citizens' participation, responsabilization, and conscious decision making. It also sustains collectivities in their everyday query for political identity and affirmation of citizenship, and liberates them from externally imposed patterns, references, and constraints. A social spatially embedded empowerment is fundamental to the sustainable development of the growing social mixité of local migrants and diasporic communities. Its capacity to balance power is crucial to strengthen the exercise of the fundamental ontogenetic rights of citizens to participate in the creation of their specialities in a unitary way, which means spatial, a spatial production that integrates its physical, social and mental dimension and combines both the individual and the associated agencies. The discussion underlying uh, this problem affecting public space and urban commons has progressively grown in, to, in the last decades and concentrated on the progressive decay of the collective agency and the increasing power of hegemonic actors. Similar work by prominent scholars on the sec in the second half of the past century include an inherent reflection on transformation of public space into a pseudo space of interaction, Jürgen Habermas analysis of the effects of the disintegration of collective discursive structures and the colonization of the public sphere with alienation of citizens from their political dimensions, Guy Debord's critique of the spectacular alienation that are produced by the autocratic reign of the market economy, Henry Lefebvre's elucidation of the sweeping subjugation of people through fetishistic concrete uh, abstraction of the speciality of the everyday life and Richard Sennett's, who was actually introducing uh, that famous session of uh, the uh, of the Habitat 3 when the urban agenda was adopted, uh, his documentation of the fall of a public man. Those studies have led to a wider recognition of this necessity of a new approach to the question of specialized publicness. Major studies by Sheila Benabib, Nancy Fraser, and David Harvey on the contemporary crisis of the political sphere and citizen rights address the urban condition of increased dispossession of collective power and urbanization on urbanization and segmentation of publics with formation of counter publics. Other who elaborated critical appraisal or special question concerning unbalances in power relations include the discrepable dissection of disciplinary systems of special control by Honey Haber David Graham Shane and uh, Michael Diane and Livian de Cauter, the meticulous description of the widening, widening privatization of urban public space by Anastasia Lucato Sideris, Edward Soja, Anna Minton, the in depth discussion on special justice and loss of commonwealth generated by cooperative labor by Seta Law, Michael, Michael Hart, and Antonio Negri. The wide ranging investigation of social spatial fragmentation and marginalization by Stuart Hogginson and Stephen Miles, uh, and the detailed studies on severe social exclusion with selective deprivation of public space by Mike Davis, Michael Sorkin, and Don Mitchell. Further in the discussion, the work presented in this, in this talk aims to produce uh, novel evidence based insights on the current transition affecting public space and urban commons. 
and develop experimental applications, design applications, that use the speculative, arch speculative architecture method to envision possible futures. Central to my discourse are some of the major social spe spatial challenges to resilience building of urban community, specifically the expansion of capability, the building of capacity, and the formation of coalition that the new technology can offer to offset the above mentioned criticalities. Given my interest for questions situated at the intersection of architecture and urbanism, I focus on the aspects of these challenges that have direct impact on the transformation of territorialization patterns and social network and their overall place-based relationality. Hereby, I submit that contemporary urban communities must develop a diversity of pathways in order to build capacity, resilience, respond to emerging disruption and adapt to changing condition. Given the enormous impact on power relationships of the new digital technology, I believe that the new strategies and tactics have to be developed to create a redundancy and reduce the vulnerability of both relational and physical components of the new civic assemblages. As demonstrated by my empirical research on special effects of digital augmented social networks, while digital technology offer great opportunity to reassemble the, reassemble the social, they also pose high threats to its autonomy, cohesion, and centrality of the emerging social assemblages. The crisis of the urban commons, which began with the neoliberal withdrawal for, of direct state involvement and continued with their comprehensive colonization uh, by the private sector, has dramatically exacerbated its path migrating to the commons of the digital space. To make the novel civil assemblages bounce forward from these threats, I believe, or disturbances, I believe that it's paramount to review the fundamental, uh, the fundamental that in the mobile digital era guaranteed exercise of the right to the city and the related right to difference. A great progress in the elaboration uh, and operalization of this notion originally developed by Lefebvre and Harvey is uh, the recent formulation of one of the highest level official documents of sustainable development of cities, the new urban agenda adopted in 2016. To guarantee the exercise of these rights uh, in the mobile internet era, the interpretation of the comprehensive right to freedom, to individualization, in socialization, to inhabit and to, in to habitat and to inhabit, which are actually the description of the right to the city, to participation and appropriation should be reframed, redefined as right to digitally augmented collective power and commoning of the multitude. This is my proposal, of course. This right continues to be a common rather than an individual right to create common fabrics that establish platform for pattern, patterns of unity and multiplicity, a right to re-articulate the existing elements through the collective will in mobilized and distributed yet hyper-connected communities, a right to the civic that, paraphrasing Jacques Rancière, politics of aesthetic produces agonistic coalitions with heterologous forms of subjectivation, radical difference of individuation and diverging logics. Now I want to show you some uh, introduction to how we get to the design with framing it uh, the new uh, with the way framing of new spe specialities. Before moving to the discussion on how to de design driven research can address the emerging question of public space and urban commons, I have to introduce two notions that guide my interpretation on the social spatial impact of pervasive phenomena regarding mobility of people and communication. And those notions are the notion of networked translocalization and of multi associative transaction. This notion frame my understanding of the way in which patterns of actual mobility and digital augmentation have not only critically transformed the mode of spatial production of present day ur urban community, but have also decisively challenged their livelihood, resilience, and patterns of deterritorialization. To the first, network translocation, trans translocalization. Is the, the, the first one is defined as the constant production of localities through mobilized territorialization processes that redefine social spatial relationship and extend size and capacity of emplaced communities. The expansion of this phenomenon is consequent to the continuous increase of the movement of people and things and acts in opposition to the dissipation of continuity and cohesion of communities that rely mainly on local networks. The main driver for its recent intensification of this translocalization is the diffusion of, the diffusion of electronically mediated communication and mobile internet, which have amplified the networking capacity of the emerging translocal communities. Digital communication has indeed accomplished what you are going to in back in the 90s, described as the inception of the internet 
age as creation, at the inception of the internet age, as creation of a new form of collective specialization where communities are no longer bounded by territory. The new translocal territorial patterns have increased plasticity and developed a global local continuum that increases uh, blended actual virtual neighborhoods by seamlessly integrating the stable and the diasporic uh, at all spatial scales. Importantly, the spatial transformation produced by network and translocalization has been accompanied by profound changes in rhythms affecting the temporal stability and per permanentness of the communities. Strong acceleration and dynamism in structure and behavior have expanded their variability. Comprehensively, the effect of translocal the translocalization produces an extremely volatile social sp social spatial relationality and makes the new communities more vulnerable and their autonomous co-production of connectedness depends on externally provided infrastructure. To the other one, multi-associative transduction. Transduction is defined as a transmutative process, we're talking Simon Don here, uh, that operates by combining heterogeneous forces. These processes can be either progressive and iterative or discontinuous and irregular. It functions by diffusing an exogenous, an exogenous activity that restructures given domains and creates provisional unities of conditions. These unities and conditions have metastable specialities that are rich in potential endowed with multiple recombinant properties, boundaries and durations. Digital augmentation has made transaction multi-associative by increasing its power to combine the potential of the real and the virtual. By introducing scalability in everyday practices, augmented mixed reality have expanded both the capab capability and capacity of translocal communities to efficaciously operate. Digital transaction has enabled them to gather in fully immersive and intensively evidential instances and diffuse information on the global scale. By embodying the virtual and the remote, in particular situated instances, instances transduction enables the active presence of actors and things in productive, reproductive, and recreational activities independently from the spatial temporal location and belonging. The digital enhanced transduction has high community building potential, firstly, to strengthen and expand the inclusivity and openness of the networks, and secondly, to support processes that are based on dialogue centrality of actors and multi stakeholdership. And eventually, we look at the design, how we design these uh, particular commons, new commons. My recent research intensive design uh, on public space and urban commons at the Urban Relation Informatics Laboratory of the University of Auckland, which is the one I founded two years ago, has revolved around the three general research questions. First, how can designers and planners in the pursuit of an integral well-being, which hinges on equality, full participation and collaboration, respond to the effects of these disrupting the phenomena that redefine their roles, missions and instruments? Second, considering the city as its uh, public space as a crucial domain for the above challenge, does the new urban condition open possibility to subvert the fragmented structure of the city and assert urban commons as fundamental space of equality? Space of equality? It, it is true that Rancière, that's the third one, as what Rancière maintains, equ that equality exists only when we exert it, it is possible to use design and planning to demonstrate the existence of equality without falling the, in the trap of revealing inequality and effectively raising awareness as fundamental for individualization and citizenship. One of the stream of Urban Relations Informatic Laboratory looked at responding to these questions by developing specialities for differentiation, pluralism, and commoning through architectural design proposition that activate the combined potential of utopia and desire. The project of the stream had developed architectural proposition for urban assemblages that operationalize the Delusian theory of assemblage. According to this, the assemblages form heterogeneous concatenation of material elements, agents of change, and system of relations that radically restructured order of things. These assemblages are a series of in-place narratives of possible future composed by relational machine, concrete infrastructure, and spatial narratives. To the first one, relational machine. Uh, the relational machines are relational system for radical democracy or design as they have to conceive like that. They affirm the city as space of difference where the unnegotiable status of equality requires strong commoning and unremitting agonistic pluralism. A space of appearance of the collective, the public space is the main agonistic arena of the city where equality is manifested, acknowledged and developed through multiple relations of exchange, confrontation and political action that guarantee the collective ownership of and of it, of, it, of these very space. Inclusive commons are the core places of these machines as the agency sustains collective participation, shared understanding, conflicts of ideas, 
tenants, tenants uh, and personalities and enable co-creativity in transcultural processes that implement the capacities that are denied in conditions of overdetermination and homogenization. Contrasting, contrasting the power of hegemonic actor, these machines sustain the collective appropriation and repossession of the spatial conception, practices and action that contribute to the production of the city. Digital augmented network translocalization made it possible to accomplish what Deleuze envisioned as nomadic sets of relations, which establishes a truly unlimited qualitative transformation and expansion of the pluralistic differential, differential assemblages. Digital augmented transaction enables establishing entirely new form of assemblages for positive de deterritorialization that can build a better alternative worlds by triggering evolutionary process in the shell of the old. Favoring translocally transduced relations, these machines sustain genuine transcultural and rhizomatic participatory arrangement of active presences, which do not require either representation or delegation. This is conducive to comprehensive processes of transformation of all elements, conditions, and agents towards maximal difference or maximal differentiation. Identification occurs through subvert exchange of values, generalized self-management, and integral relationality. To the second one, concrete infrastructure. Concrete infrastructure are the both tangible and intangible elements of the assemblages. They form in place civic institutions which enable to share resources that escape the logic of abstraction, control, and domination. These machines sustain the growth of new urban centralities by establishing counter spaces inspired by the right to the city and the right to, to the center. These counter spaces constitute the main spatial reference for communities engaged in the emancipatory processes to counteract the dissipation of the common world. They revert sustained processes of social fragmentation, marginalization, exclusion that creates cities of enclosures that are one we see more and more developing in our spaces. As structures open to incremental development, there are combination of new spaces, devices, and technology that provide the knowledge and instruments to terminate the abstractive, abstractive, abstracting in the Ferian sense, delegation of the transformational urban space to circles of expert managers. Virtual augmented and mixed reality, realities augmentations made it possible for this infrastructure to provide translocal communities with a common ground with its both transformational and transformative, which is both which, not with transformation and transformative. This augmentation facilitated the emplaced embodiment of the metastable specialities of the overall assemblages by constructing piece by piece context specific platforms that support the nomadic set of relations of the machines for difference and pluralism. To the third one, and I'll get to conclusion that the last part, uh, spatial narratives. The design proposition, proposition integrated the relational machines and concrete infrastructure with a narrative that articulates possible futures. The narrative describes, uh, detects, and discloses the existence of things in common that are found in the everyday public practices of the city. It contributes to the formulation of hegemonic discourses of emancipated community that speak. And here's again Rancière. These hegemonic discourses, this is actually Gramsci picked up by Laclau and Rancière as well, these hegemonic discourses elaborate upon and affirm the existence of subversive coalitions found in political interaction and struggle of communities that constitutes the social. The construction of these accounts in structured and consistent counter narratives uses the free play of signifiers, escaping from imposed signification and opens them to continual contestation of articulation for the construction of identities. And what you see here is the transformation of car park in a particular temple of the everyday. The design-based proposition focuses on specific elements and context to form creative speculation that envision possible assemblages of cohesive, cohesive, resilient, and productive societies. These propositions formulate a specific topoi in form of prose that reimagine utopia. These are place-based and sign value articulation that envision more than real spatial conception of full-blown heterotopic spaces, dioramic theatralization of the contingent, meaningless structural forms are set up to confirm the right to the civic. The proposal deployed the productive agency of desire by envisioning couplings of separate and independent entities that institute commons for integrated collective activities. These are desiring machines, desiring machines for both production and social reproduction that generate enjoyment and pleasure. The proposition result from this pro resulting from this process institute relational infrastructure system with a restorative recording of the contested contemporary mode of production. 
transformational strategies, uh, activate the new relational infrastructure by employing allegorical content-specific narrative methods. Top of all, the production of production with high internal consistency and cohesion, engagements uh, uh, with possible world, engage with possible words, uh, propose uh, tight signifying chains of fluidly recorded rounds of decoded institutions, the creation of public, so that's a territorialization, re-territorialization. The creation of public uh, commons uh, that support social spatial relationality between people and their environment uh, adopts space generation processes aimed to establish uh, collective territories uh, and free space for empowerment to individuals and communities. Challenging the conventional role of architecture, allegory is used to shape uh, finely tuned machine mechanic narratives uh, and drives of change for social political and social economic condition of crisis. The proposition explore and the, uh, the power of allegory and architecture by deploying super, super signifiers that disestablish the exogen exogenous hegemonic system and deterritorialize de their abstractive apparatus. That's the last slide. The strategies and tactics of appropriation which support autonomy and self-determination in the specific instances are subject to multiple superimposition, the deterritorialization and reterritorialization processes with the mix with each mixes of instrumentalities, these are, deployed, these are deployed to delineate architectonics of wonder the, and affirm, that affirm maximal difference in urban life. Ultimately, this proposition aims to reinvigorate the creative architectural discourse on the potential role of space for dialogue by radically enacting the liberating power of the translocal and transductive metastable spatiality to institute moments of Jewish science in utopia as parodic fabulatory process of the ordinary. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for the nice presentation, interesting presentation, uh, Manfredo, Professor Manfredo Manfredini. And you presented, uh, yeah, uh, many terminologies and yeah, we, we should uh, focus on uh, what uh, you mean. But uh, I highlight that uh, you uh, present uh, that what we, we uh, face is uh, what we face uh, here in the transition period. Okay, we jump to, to Professor Manfredo. There is a there are two two questions uh, now. Yeah, uh, first one. I think I also already read for you, but uh, yeah how to maintain the existence of a space as a container of all human activities. That's the first one. And the second one is uh, from Nina Husna, Miss Nina Husna. Uh, as you said about multi-associative transduction by introducing scalability in everyday practice, argumented and mixed realities have expanded both the capacity uh, of trans local communities to efficiently, efficiently operate. How do you think this influence effect of the daily life of urban residents? This is, uh, I think, two, two, two questions, but you can answer uh, together. Yeah. Oh, th thank you for the questions. They allow me to elaborate on what uh, I <laughs> put in this uh, speedy presentation, uh, which is a conflation yeah. of probably too many. Uh, different thoughts, ideas, and uh, uh, because uh, uh, I understand that uh, this conference is both for architects and urbanists, uh, I yes. wanted to show probably my, uh, how can I say, binary uh, thinking. Uh, and uh, uh, I guess that these questions, uh, both of them, uh, uh, actually highlight uh, one particular uh, question that is core and central uh, to our understanding. Uh, I'm not very familiar, I have to say, with the Indonesian context. I've been in Indonesia mm -hmm. only a few times, uh, but uh, I know something uh, uh, which uh, probably is quite interesting that uh, um, might have uh, uh, the possibility of uh, even uh, moving towards an answer of, uh, uh, to these questions. Um, well, this, uh, in first, this idea of the container for human activities. So I was uh, lucky to uh, supervised the thesis, a PhD thesis of a student uh, from uh, Surabaya uh, who uh, made the research uh, exactly on uh, uh, these containers, 
or in other words, uh, on the major containers that nowadays uh, are becoming uh, the center of our daily public life. Uh, what are these? Uh, where are the shopping malls? Tunjugan Plaza is probably yes. the best example in Surabaya. So what is the problem with these places? The problem with these places is that, of course, they are designed in a way which is uh, not uh, only adverse uh, to socialization. In some malls, there are even uh, code of conduct uh, that limit uh, uh, the congregation of people to some something like three. So the maximum that's a three is already a maximum number admitted. Uh, but not only detrimental to this one, but uh, 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 terribly det detrimental to the growth of, of global culture, or local culture. It's not now what I'm telling about uh, talking about the problem of uh, local or uh, local against global, but it's a problem of understanding how to respond and how to interpret uh, what uh, the Vizari Tunas was talking about before, the way in which uh, we are able really to appreciate, understand the local condition, the specificities, the demand and the needs, and not necessarily a blanket solution that uh, in one way or another are filtering and creating even more inequalities than the one that uh, there were before then. So the case of Tunjugan Plaza for, for, uh, Plaza, for instance, is quite interesting because uh, what you see emerging there, and this was actually the topic of this thesis that was actually completed a few months ago, was uh, uh, the investigation on what is happening and how the local uh, community, actually uh, that there are Two, multiple communities in the area, because there are different, different uh, I guess they're called Kelura Han, if I don't get wrong, uh, uh, how these communities uh, are able in one way or another to understand and interpret uh, the externalities of these major projects uh, to redevelop space, spaces uh, that counteract and contrast uh, what is happening inside the mall. So what is uh, particularly interesting here, and that's what, uh, again, uh, uh, moves towards this idea of the translocal translocalism uh, that I was talking about, is the fact that places like this one, so that particular street uh, that uh, uh, is uh, next adjacent uh, to the big wall, five meter tall wall of Tunjugan Plaza to the north uh, of the mall, uh, is actually a street which is incredibly capable of converting uh, uh, what, it, what, would, what was uh, a particular detrimental development for the local community, blocking its access to the city, uh, essentially dispossessing them from several infrastructure. One was a school, for instance, that was displaced and relocated, but also other, other infrastructure and other facilities like public space. How actually this was completely converted in something else. It's not that I want, I want to romanticize what is happening there. I just want to say that we have examples, and these are the ones that uh, in my research, the one I presented uh, uh, in both cases, so that the first one, which is analytical, and the second one, which is uh, actually uh, made a proposition, a sort of propositive, so our, our architectural design uh, projects, uh, uh, is able to capture or capture and elaborate. So in other words, I mentioned Jacques Rancière. So what we need to do is not keep uh, 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 working against uh, something, but we have to really capture the elements uh, that we see in our society, treasure them, working on them, and possibly try to understand how to deal with it. And then totally with uh, the Visari Tunas, we don't know enough. We do not know enough. What I'm doing now with uh, my research on Instagram is something that uh, initially started simply because I was interested in understanding how people understand their spaces. If you want to try to update a research that was done by Kevin Lynch uh, on Boston <laughs> or by more than 50 more than 50 years ago, and understanding what is the the perception and uh, what uh, Lefebvre would call uh, uh, the the way in which space becomes uh, a space of the everyday practices. So. To do that, uh, eventually I ended up uh, discovering something which is uh, absolutely interesting. And uh, as the Vizari was uh, presenting, uh, I didn't have the chance because of the time constraints, uh, but I actually recently published an article on uh, the particular impact on uh, COVID in New Zealand. Sorry, uh, uh, I, I'm Italian and I understand completely what it means being in a situation like you are in. At the moment, Italy has the peak uh, yesterday, 9,000 people uh, got infected in one day, which is uh, something never, never heard before. I'm lucky uh, to live in New Zealand where our government uh, probably even too much proactive <laughs> because they put us in a sort of lockdown where you had five cases per day, yeah, you can yeah. imagine, in yeah. the whole country. But it's free, you know, it's, uh, it's now virtually uh, COVID-free. 
So, and, uh, you know, students are here at school and I had to lock my door, otherwise they would come in when I'm talking uh, and uh, you can go for a coffee, you can go wherever you like. So, is, li, 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 uh, li, uh, the, your life uh, is a life like, as usual with the difference that we cannot go anywhere. We have to stay into the country. So, the, the, the research that I've done, uh, and then I cut short because otherwise I, I eat all the time for this discussion. The research that I've done during COVID uh, was incredibly interesting because it revealed one incredible thing, that the new forms of, uh, let's say, molding of the city, which is completely changing the patterns, uh, uh, probably due to the e online commerce, uh, due to all the things that uh, are accompanying uh, a, re a restructuring of the city, are actually creating a completely new way in which people relate to other people. So looking at Instagram, which is geolocated and based on visual elements, visual components, what you can do is to start understanding really what is happening behind the sort of completely disconnected, completely, uh, how can I say, fragmented space of the mall in which people cannot even meet other people. And what you see is that there, are, there is an incredible growth in communities, which are possibly not only digital, because they are place-based, they're embedded in their particular places. And those are the things that probably are, are, are really interesting for us to rethink at how the, to design and to reconceive the space, uh, which is the space of appearance, as uh, Anna Arendt would say, back in time, uh, that is the public space, the space in which we appear for, f first and foremost to ourselves uh, more than to the others. Thank you for your uh, answer. Uh, one again for uh, Dr. Devi, but uh, I would like to enlarge this question to mm -hmm. uh, your three speakers. Yeah, thank you for Dr. Devi for such a wonderful presentation. This uh, from Zulfi Kardinar Wahidayat Putra. Uh, he, yeah, regarding the post COVID-19 planning paradigm, it seemed planning or design paradigm, it seemed that our design and planning approach to the current pandemic situation tends to be more utilizing technocratic peace modeling or uh, yeah, uh, top down, for example, as you have presented. Yeah, Dr. Devi uh, yeah. said, yeah. But how about local small scale innovative concrete project which are conducted by the local people in handling the COVID-19 for the future planning or design, yeah, for uh, Professor Yuan. Should we also adopt these people's project in our planning guidelines? If so, oh, yeah, that's a, uh, I think this uh, question is uh, appropriate or uh, also can be answered by uh, your uh, three, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. KP first and uh, yeah. Professor Yuan and finally Professor Manfredo, please. Yeah. It's a very good question and uh, uh, very difficult to answer. It's very difficult to answer because we can uh, uh, probably see that uh, the pandemic uh, uh, effect is something that in first place we don't, still don't know what will be the aftermath, what will be the effects uh, and how that will impact uh, uh, not only uh, in terms of really uh, getting uh, uh, out of this uh, situation from the medical point of view, but how it will impact on other layers, but starting with the economy. So that, that's, uh, that's a major problem, but even not considering uh, uh, that, so in imagining that we're looking at uh, what is happening after, which is probably what we've done too much uh, uh, without considering uh, the risks and the threats uh, of uh, living in this uh, situation, in this sort of pseudo-normal situation which we, we are at the moment. So the question is uh, that uh, we probably can say that we haven't learned we haven't learned much, but or we haven't learned a lot. So, in other words, uh, is a is a this pandemic uh, uh, has created situation that exacerbated uh, existing problems. So, uh, in the presentation of Makassar, was very clear something that uh, uh, we've seen in many other countries, uh, from the U.S. Uh, to South America, Brazil, my uh, friends uh, uh, that uh, are studying exactly this phenomena which is that uh, the, in the inequality in uh, health, in population health, uh, is exactly the same uh, that we see in all these uh, situations and, uh, and exactly uh, the, the, the pandemic. So this uh, um, uh, the particular uh, circumstance uh, has just demonstrated and aggravated uh, the inequality, the, in the existing inequality. So. Uh, on that, from that perspective, uh, the only lecture, the only thing that is very clear 
even even if it was clear since the very the, the very um, how can I say first understanding of what we are doing as plan as architects is the fact that we can't find solution that are individually ad addressing uh, problems. So I fully understand that uh, of course we can design uh, much better. Uh, the places where people live and we can create conditions uh, that limit uh, or in one way or another reduce uh, the risk uh, uh, mitigation strategies but the very question is uh, what how that fit in the overall uh, uh, in the framework of uh, the policies and strategies and tactics. I want just to make you an example. In New Zealand, uh, the, our government initially was uh, very criticized because they invested a lot of money uh, just giving a, a, a universal salary uh, to uh, income to all the people that uh, lost their job or they had to stay home. So that gave immediately the possibility uh, to people to stay at home. and. Uh, that made it possible really to all of us uh, to really get rid of the virus within four weeks. Now, this is something that, uh, of course, uh, uh, cannot be uh, anything uh, that goes beyond uh, the way in which uh, the pattern of, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, of inhabitation that we have in our places. But it's something that is absolutely specific. When I hear what is happening in Sweden, for instance, uh, where they had this uh, very, how can I say, experimental and loose uh, approach uh, uh, to the COVID, uh, giving people responsibility, uh, where we all thought that's the, that's an ideal condition, but that's Sweden. Sweden, a place in which I remember when I was teaching at the Polytechnic of Milano, I, I was very, very interested in social housing, and I would invite people coming from Scandinavian countries, and you know what they say? Well, we don't have a problem. We don't have a problem with social housing. We have houses, we have enough. Now what interests us is quality. So what is happening in Sweden is 40% of the households are mononuclear, so one single family. Oh, sorry, one single member per family. So that immediately tells you that if you want to go through social isolation, that's absolutely uh, self, self isolating. It's absolutely possible, absolutely feasible, great welfare has decreased from probably the 80s, but uh, still uh, not comparable to the one that we see in many of other countries, even in Europe. So, and that again goes back uh, to uh, what uh, I was taught by Bernardo Secchi, who was the person who uh, I first encountered when I went to, went to study at the Politecnico di Milano. Uh, they would say, what we have to, to really take care is of the soil. So, uh, really of the detail, of the details, of the specificity on each and every, and every situation. And understand how the soil Soil is actually part of an ecosystem, and we need to understand how the two interact before really making any decision. Otherwise, we end up only trying to put patches and not really address what it is. Having said that, of course, we've learned a lot from the pandemics, and even here in our city, we are rethinking at how we design public space, how we are rethinking at how we design centralities, and rethinking in particular at how to understand the conjunction between the emerging specialities of the digital and the real that are becoming more and more a continuum, a hybrid actual virtual continuum in which uh, we keep moving and uh, acting. Yeah. I hope I answered. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for all the speakers.